never wanted anything more. Cruel goodbyes, expected battles, a meaningful epilogue this is all that the end of Wonder Woman 1984 means. I hate guns. Wonder Woman 1984 has finally arrived, and it has come just in time to give us the topic of conversation with the cousins at Christmas gatherings. Who wants them back? The new installment of Gal Gadot's Adventures as Wonder Woman by Patty Jenkins lasts no less than two and a half hours. That was Max Lord. It also has two villains, time trips, and an ending with more climax than The Return of the King. You have not been the only one who has felt run over by Cheetah while shouting Alistair. What did you do? In the middle of a world in the destruction that is fixed? In five minutes. This is the what, how, and why of the thick outcome of Wonder Woman 1984. The stone of wishes to talk about the end, you have to start at the beginning and remember that the key to the film, now located in the year that adorns its title, is the stone of wishes. Did you see that? There is no fight against Ares worth a world war here, although the Cold War is the backdrop. As he says, paralyzed by fear, Diana, the stone was created by the evil god Dolos, the Greek god of deception and fraud. Come on, you can see from afar that one of his creations has nothing good. Every wish you ask is fulfilled, taking something that you appreciate even more in return. It is, to give us an idea, the same thing that happens into hell with the devil, but with a stone instead of with Raquel Welch, in the 67 version, or Elizabeth Hurley, in the 2000 version. Diana Prince, Gal Gadot, and Barbara Minerva, Kristen Weig, before fighting as Wonder Woman and Chedit. Do a historical review and discover something horrible. The appearance of the stone coincides with the end of the civilization in which it appears. Consequently, as much as we expected of Cheetah, the main villain of the film is Maxwell Lord, Pedro Pascal, a hustler maddened with ambition. The truth is that he has had a good idea to use the stone without its immediate consequences, wanting to become it. Thus, he not only ensures that it disappears with him and cannot be used by anyone else, but also avoids the price that must be paid and is not limited to a single wish. I take your health and your strength. Give her your rage. His plan is simple, make contact with someone who makes a wish and charge him, as a price, his. Only two characters make their wish on the stone itself before it is taken by Max Lord, Barbara, who wishes to be like Diana, and the latter, who asks to recover her beloved Steve Trevor, Chris Pine. While Max travels the world enlarging his fortune and trying to control his situation, causing a wave of international chaos that threatens to explode the Cold War in the form of a nuclear apocalypse, the wish of the two protagonists is also fulfilled. My money. You're going to regret this. Or well, the FTC gets an anonymous report. <laughs> The shy and caring Barbara becomes a charismatic, attractive person with the powers of Diana. In return, he loses his humility, humanity, innocence, and goodness. Barbara. Diana retrieves Steve through the body of a poor anonymous engineer, but gradually loses her powers. We take a little jump to the moving ending of the film. Barbara, I know you're in there. Please, please renounce your wish. It's over. Diana has already lost almost all her powers, Barbara asks Max Lord to win even more, which is equivalent, for some reason, to growing body hair and tail, that is, to becoming a cheetah. This, for its part, accesses a program of the United States government to broadcast its message on all the screens of the world at the same time, and, thus, do all its work of wishes and conquest at the same time. We might think that this of wishes through television does not make sense without physical contact, but we can find an explanation in the wish that this turns out well for me, that Lord makes the counselor ask him before the broadcast to listen to us. <laughs> A nice thought. Either way, it works, and Max Lord begins to grant wishes across the world, unleashing chaos of death and atomic bombs. Goodbye Steve, see you later Cheetah. The first climax of the film is between Diana and Steve. After almost half a century alone, even the greatest heroine is reluctant to give up her love, even though she knows it is the right thing to do. 
He insists on her until they say goodbye with a kiss and a I give up my wish that ends, again, Steve's life, but makes Diana regain all her powers. What's more, as if the pilot's own spirit had possessed her, Diana learns to channel her strength and form in the air to master one of her classic powers, flight. We'll talk about learning to fly the invisible jet another day. Along with the golden armor of the Amazons, Diana flies to where Max Lord is emitting his apocalyptic wishing hour. That is where he fights Cheetah. More than enemies, let's remember that they are friends at odds. There's always more. But you only get one wish. Like Diana, who resisted giving up her wish, Barbara doesn't want to go back to being the invisible outcast she was. For that reason, and not out of enmity or pure evil, he fights Diana. The fight ends in the water, with Cheetah being electrocuted by the fallen wire of a power tower. Then I'm so sorry. The truth is the only wish. Diana, who can even fly, cannot overcome the current of air that surrounds Max Lord while granting wishes for millions. But while it seemed that he had been giving us the beautiful speech of solidarity and truth that the Amazons taught him so hard, remember the flashback with which the film begins, in reality, he had been transmitting it to the world public through the lasso of the truth. Remember, as she clarifies to Steve Trevor, that the bond not only forces you to tell the truth, it also makes you see it. By entangling himself around the leg of Pedro Pascal's character, he not only transmits Diana's message to everyone, but also makes them feel it. Who wants them back? Who doesn't want to be afraid anymore? As the rest of the world begins to return their wishes, the nuclear bombs disappear and the planet begins to stabilize again. Wonder Woman 1984 enters her most unfortunate climax. Disappearing, sir. Yes, sir, they are vanishing from our screen. Maxwell Lord's turning point is not the nuclear destruction of the world, but hearing his son's wish that he return to him and love him. Max returns to Washington, D.C., and, by the magic of the cinema, finds his son Alistair, 20 meters from where he lands, after giving two screams. Father and son hug while, using flashbacks, the film justifies the evil and selfish actions of the oil magnate in the wake of a tough childhood. Max discovers that his son is more important than his crazy ambitions, and there we leave him. Let's hope someone will put him in jail, but we don't know anything else about him. The film closes as a small epilogue, with Diana in a brief encounter with the man whose body Steve Trevor took. We do not have to understand this with that character is going to be Wonder Woman's next boyfriend, only that, after years anchored in the past, she is ready to overcome it, move forward, and open up to new friendships and relationships. If the first film, like all superhero initials, was of origins, the truth is that it is also largely so. Diana not only achieves more powers and attributes, but also completes her maturation and personality. She finally understands the teaching of Antiope, Robin Wright, in the competition at the beginning of the film, and fully assumes her role in the world, without isolating her to a melancholic and lonely life. That is the only truth, and truth is all there is. But I would have won if you didn't. But you didn't. You cannot be the winner because you are not ready to win. The great mystery that the film leaves in the air is that of Barbara Minerva. 